The final month is in the bags, so here are all the games I completed in December. The very first game that I completed it was Super Mario Wonder. This is a Super Mario Bros. game that I've been wanting to finish. I saw this and enjoyed the trailers and decided to pick it up and play it, and I beat it in a couple days. It's a little bit easier game, but again, you can add challenges to yourself. So, for example, it was one of those games kind of like um, pick and choose what you wanted to do. So if you went to a level, you could see all the easy levels, all the medium levels, and all the difficult levels. And you could just decide what you wanted to play for that world. And I like that little added bonus of if you wanted a challenge, you could challenge yourself. If you wanted just to breeze through it, you could breeze through it. It was a nice balance. I really enjoyed this game. I recommend it to anybody who is into Super Mario Bros. games and was debating about this one. The Wonder Seeds add a nice challenge to it. You could pick them up and you had to get them just like anything else like Super Mario Odyssey. It had a little bit of element in that too where you had to pick up all the Wonder Seeds. You had to pick up different things to be able to move on, progress to the next, open up the gate situation. And I really enjoyed that. I had a good time with it. So definitely pick this up. After that, I decided to play Tears of the Kingdom and try to finish it. I had put it down for a little bit because I got frustrated. Did not want to rage quit it. And I'm glad I did. I was so happy when I defeated the final battle. Uh, for this one, it's a lot more difficult. I completed in Breath of the Wild in 40 hours. This one was 75 hours. It's a game where if you skip stuff, you're going to face it at the very end. So just FYI. Don't skip stuff because I beat the guy, the final battle, and then I went back and I was like, let me watch this. And sure enough, somebody speed run it and showed that you have to face every single creature, every single item that was left. So I had to go get the Master Sword. Um, I enjoyed the memories. Uh, there was a little gripe of, of the memories. Um, he's acting like and not telling people stuff that he finds out. <laughs> And he's letting people just keep the same dialogue. That was the only issue I had with it. And that's why it was not number one for my top ten. Was because if you're finding out stuff, why aren't you telling the people? Like, hey, I know where this is or I know what this is going on. Why Why are you just like letting them just keep the same dialogue? And that was the only issue is it felt like they shouldn't have been like Breath of the Wild where you find the memories in different orders. Like literally just give me a memory. Tell me where to go. You already told me from Breath of the Wild you didn't have any, like, go here, go there. It was just like, you explore, do your own thing, you find it at your own pace. This one, they actually told you where to go, so why not just tell me, here's the first memory, go there. Here's the second memory, go there. You know? Like, that would have made it so much easier for me. <laughs> I just wish that was the only difference, is that was why it was number three on my list. But, great game. I recommend it for anybody who likes Zelda games likes open world, you'll, you'll enjoy this one. After that, I decided to play a backlog game, and that is Camp Rock and the Final Jam. This is a puzzle, environment puzzle game meets rhythm game. You basically are playing a character who's going to Camp Rock, and you're following the movie. So if you know the Final Jam movie, or you know Camp Rock movies, literally it's just the first movie all the way through. You're going in, getting characters, and try to build up their, like, Hey, you could do this. You got this. But it was weird is you had to go find something for them. Like, I lost my bracelet. I can't perform without my bracelet. And that was okay for the first couple levels or the first couple chapters. But the second or third character, fourth character, I'm like, come on. <laughs> like, how many times do I have to find crap for everybody? Like, that is annoying as hell. So if you do find this and you want to pick it up, just be ready for a rhythm game and annoying characters who, I need this. Oh my gosh, I'm going to leave this camp and go to here. I'm like, go, leave. Get the hell out of here. I don't care. So it's an okay game. It's not a great game. I wouldn't pick it up. If it wasn't dirt cheap, I, I paid like a couple bucks for it. I would have never got this and this would have stayed in my backlog if I wasn't like, eh, let me just knock out some of my backlog games. So it's an okay game. After that, I played a game called Sushi Time. This is kind of like Diner Dash or any of the games where you go in and you're running a restaurant and you have to take the person's order, fill it out, and then send it to them. The one element that I love that they changed is if 
a character orders the same as another character and they're sitting in the first seat, they will take that item even though the other person's been there for a while. So it's an added bonus to it, like a challenge where you have to like pay attention like, oh, this person took that even though that's supposed to go to this character. It's a nice little keep adding stuff, moving your stuff along. Um, it's only like 60 levels, 65 levels. So if you want some DLC, they have DLC, but I just played it through the regular story and moved on, but I enjoyed it. I had a good time with this one. After that, I played Mortal Kombat 11, the Ultimate Edition. This one is basically a multiverse kind of game where you have two different like past and present meeting and clashing against each other. So you have multiple Liu Kangs, multiple Sub-Zeros, multiple Scorpions, you know, everything doubled. And the old characters are whatever they their selves are, meeting their future selves and realizing that the future is not great. So whatever happens, happens. I will say that the ending is very catastrophic <laughs> and changes a lot of stuff. So if you're not prepared for that, it's kind of like, oh, damn. Wow, they really did that shit. Okay. So it's a, it's a good game. Um, I like the story. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like was every single character played the same. I felt like the older characters should have had a little bit of a difference. Not much, but I mean like a couple changes that I could feel. But if you played a scorpion, the new one and the old one, you literally had the same moves. And it was okay. And now I gotta play Mortal Kombat 1 to see what they did and moved and changed. But I kind of got the gist from the trailers of what happened. But I liked it. It's a good fighter. If you are into Mortal Kombat, definitely try it out. It's dirt cheap right now. After that, I played a little indie game, I think, that has been on Game Pass and PSN Plus and Switch and everything like that. And that's Untitled Goose Game. This was a puzzle environment challenge thing where you got a list of stuff that you had to do as a goose. And you're basically annoying people. So you're told to like find a rake and put it in the lake. <laughs> kind of like a Dr. Seuss. Uh, find some boots and take them over to this area. Find a newspaper and hide it there. Stuff like that. And you just got a little bit of dialogue as like... The people are like rrr, 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 at you, kind of like peanuts, where they are mad at you and you see their their facial features and everything like that. But I enjoyed this game. It was a cute little game. Um, I'm not sure how long it is because I took forever to figure out a couple puzzles, so I can't guarantee that it's in one sitting. I think like I had to do this in a couple days because I got to the point where I was like, oh, I think I got it. Oh uh, no, why isn't it working? So. I really enjoy this game. I recommend it to anybody who's into puzzle games that wants a little bit of a challenge. It's fun. It's cute. And I think there is co-op. So if you want to play co-op, you can. So enjoy. Be annoying. And the very last game of the year was Cruisin' World for the N64. I had been wanting to play a cruising game on stream and I had a good time with this. I basically got number one in a championship mode. There is no story mode for this cruising game. You literally just play as a championship. And I asked my chat, do I add this to the beat list? Do I add this to the finish list? And it was a resounding yes for 100%. And so I counted it. Um, if you have never played a cruising world game or cruising anything, it's basically you race and you have a lot of funny little shenanigans that could happen. A lot of cars that fly at you. It's kind of like Road Rash or stuff like that. You have to avoid obstacles and you have to race other characters. You know that the fast characters are going to be red because the scientific MVL said it. And <laughs> it was so funny to see UFOs in England. Also confirmed that <laughs> you got UFOs. But I had a good time with it. It's a good game. Definitely try it out if you have the N64. There you have it, everybody. I completed over 100 games this year. I had a fun time with it. So if you are new, please hit the like, check out a couple other videos, give a sub if you like the content. Helps me out and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the real deal, gamer gal. Give her the crown right now, she's royale. PC, PlayStation, Xbox. A chest list stream definitely rocks. Nintendo Switch way back to arcades. Jump on the Oregon Trail and join the raid. Dungeons and Dragons reviews and interviews. This gaming channel puts you in a good mood.
home grade content like all her funny skits. Home girl shopping network and the gamer girl kid. Raspberry Pi to OG hardware. Linda's playing games everywhere. <laughs>